But tomorrow's session is going to be super important uh, in probably dictating which way the wind is going to blow uh, for at least for the remainder of the week, right? For kind of setting up for the, for the week, uh, if not for uh, the year, you know, fourth quarter run. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Hope everybody is having a beautiful, wonderful fall uh, weekend. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the Access of Trading uh, Weekend update show. Hope everybody had a great week. Uh, again, I'm still getting countless emails from this Friday's session. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, market is very close to kind of reestablishing greatness from the technical side and that's kind of what we always look at uh, before we determine how aggressive or how passive you want to go as an individual trader, as an individual investor. Uh, if you guys remember, and again, this is the, the most purest form. Before, you know, a lot of you guys are brand new traders. Um, a lot of you guys have fallen in the love with the concept of trading, and that's awesome. I really think that's awesome. Uh, if you want to do it, uh, make sure, again, you get all your ducks in a row. Again, it's another time for another place, but it all starts out uh, with technical analysis. And we've been saying this for, for, for a number of years. Nothing good in the market generally happens below the 50-day moving average if you're a long bias investor. Nothing good in the overall market ever happens above the 50-day moving average if you are a short bias investor. And so you can see clearly here when we lost uh, on September the 24th, when we lost the 50-day moving average, the predominant action has been on the sell side. Of course, there's been some really you know, pretty good dead cat balances followed by rejections, followed by reclaims, but nothing will ever be really expanded and really exaggerated until we clear the 50-day moving average. And yada, 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 here we are again. And the last time we were at the 50-day moving average was September the 28th, right? Doesn't feel like a long time ago uh, because it wasn't, right? It was only about three weeks ago. And that day proved to be uh, another proving ground for the bulls and the bears to try to seize control. And as you can see here, uh, the market got rejected. The queues got rejected off the 50-day moving average. And we started to roll over uh, for the next week and a half, you know, pretty going down pretty aggressively. I mean, we went from literally 370 uh, to 350 on the queues in a matter of five, six days. So that was pretty aggressive. Uh, what the bulls did right was dead cat bouncing initially, okay? Dead cat bouncing initially uh, to the 20 day moving average. And again, another battleground type of area. The bears seized control for the next four days, sold the market off. But what the bulls did and what the bulls continue to do for generation to generation to generation, again, going back from the Asian crisis uh, in 98, 99, going back to 9-11, going back to the mortgage crisis, going back to the pandemic. Remember a long time ago? Still in it. Um, and the bulls keep on being resilient. And that's the key. And that's the most important part. And what the bulls did was they reclaimed the five-day moving average, uh, bounced into supply. If you guys remember, uh, I did a video on Thursday night instead of Wednesday. My daughter had a soccer game. They reclaimed the 20-day moving average. And, you know, we were really bullish, right? We were definitely very bullish uh, going into Friday session. Again, that Thursday video was you know, pretty clean, right? Once we reclaimed the 20-day supply that we kept on getting rejected nonstop, it really gave us a, a high probability that we were going to get to the 50-day moving average. Again, I'll be the first one to admit it. I didn't think we were going to get to the 50-day moving average um, Friday, right? I just didn't think so. But I, I said there's a high probability we, we kind of get there. Again, stocks go uh, from supply to supply to supply. And here we are again. We're right back to the 50-day moving average. Uh, a lot of names did incredibly well on Friday. But more important, it's not even what happened on Friday. And there was some amazing moves. We'll get to that in a second. It's what happens when we're about to, and let's just say for argument's sake, and we're about to reclaim this 50-day moving average. Again, if you scroll down to your charts and go all the way back to May the 20th, it's kind of a reference point that I keep on reiterating to, 
May the 20th was very, very significant. May the 20th, we reclaimed the 50-day moving average right over here, right? And it started uh, and it started May, June, July, August, right? It started a four-month rally, which was a very, very big deal. As you can see here, how big this rally was from the reclaiming of the 20-day moving average, a uh, 50-day moving average. And once we lost the 50-day moving average for the next a uh, month or so we were below okay so this is why the 50 is such a big deal uh going into tomorrow's session and i, I will say this much um you know if you are a perma bull we got to reclaim it on the close right if you are a perma bear then you got to defend that 50 day moving average with all you might like you did on september the 28th but tomorrow's session is going to be super important uh, in probably dictating which way the wind is going to blow uh, for at least for the re remainder of the week, right? For kind of setting up for the for the week, uh, if not for uh, the year, you know, fourth quarter run. And traditionally, if you guys remember, traditionally, for you guys have been trading long enough, the four, end of the fourth quarter is a traditionally really aggressive uh, speculation month. You have small caps uh, moving up. You have the darlings of Wall Street technology, high beta moving up. So this would correlate perfectly with the remount of the 50 day moving average and reclaiming it higher, because if that's the case, then we have uh, the Halloween, right? The Halloween festivities uh, spilling over to uh, the Thanksgiving rally, spilling over to the Santa Claus rally and then spilling over to the first quarter of 2022, the quote unquote uh, January effect where fresh money is being put down by institutions. So yeah, you know, not to kind of look forward, not to put the cart in front of the horse, but yeah, tomorrow is gonna be uh, a pretty big day uh, for the bulls. And I do believe if we can close above the 50 day moving average tomorrow, then we all these little things that we've been kind of talking about in the last few minutes, all these different events, all these different uh, holidays could be real in the market, you know, just like that. Uh, we could be, you know, in a month from now, we could be talking at all time highs. So it's going to be super duper important. Uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes you have to look at a million charts uh, and look at a million groups and a million indexes and ETFs and all that good stuff to kind of try to figure out what happens next. Uh, it's right in front of us. Okay, everybody has the exact data in front of us. I don't care if you trade uh, if you trade pivots, if you trade small caps, if you trade mid caps, uh, you know, uh, you know, Bitcoin, whatever the case may be. That 50-day moving average is going to either make it or break the week, and it's going to start kind of a snowball effect of what potentially could happen next. Bulls reclaim, we go higher. Bulls get rejected on Monday, we go lower and possibly test uh, the back channels here. So it's one of those cases, uh, it's pretty simplistic in nature. Build over, higher, build under, lower. Not too many days, uh, not too many days throughout the year are you going to have such a simplistic view of kind of what happens next just because not every single day uh, there's a you know there's a really big fight an aggressive moment uh, at the 50 day moving average so we're kind of set up uh, into uh, into Monday's session um, the one cool part which I mentioned a little earlier was number one uh, we have a catalyst in, in front of us uh, banks uh, already started coming out with earnings uh, JP Morgan fantastic Bank of America fantastic Goldman Sachs fantastic so uh, banks did really really well they continue to kind of come out with earnings and now it's technology's turn now you have Tuesday Netflix that starts uh, off the technology for beta names uh, Tesla uh, Netflix has been on a magnificent magnificent run ridiculous amounts of catalyst you had the Seinfeld uh, debut October the 1st, right? Biggest show, uh, biggest show uh, sitcom in uh, TV history. You have this Squid Game that's breaking uh, all types of records. And by the way, you got you, right? If you haven't seen it, I'm telling you, you should watch it. If you like these psychological thrillers, fantastic season three. You got Narcos Mexico coming and Ozark. Finally, Ozark, a finally trailer. So Netflix has a lot of good stuff happening. Now let's see if that translates into higher appreciation uh, for, for the stock. The stock has been absolutely on fire. This is literally the only one uh, out of the beta that did not get rattled on any sell-off below the 50-day moving averages and continue uh, to trade higher. Tesla, an absolute uh, rock star uh, ever since Tesla reclaimed this uh, linear regression line here uh, at 777 and took out uh, the previous channels high at 807 has been absolutely monster they've been kind of walking it up every single day and you can see these tight 
channels every single day, five, six dollars, four or five dollars, four, look how tight, and then all of a sudden Friday, all those call buyers that we've been talking about for a number of weeks, the out of the money, 850s, the 880s, the 890s, uh, even some of the sprinkled in the 900s, they all came into roost. An absolute fantastic, fantastic move on Friday. I mean, look at this channel, right? Once it took out, uh, once it took out that weekly, uh, weekly pivot. We'll get to the individual pivots in a second. Just an absolute monster move. Uh, Amazon went absolutely nuts. One of the biggest, one of the biggest candles I could remember in a long, long time. And it started again. This is how, guy, yeah, folks. This is how super important option flow is. We always talk about the igniting of stocks usually happens in the options market. And it was so innocent, right? A guy, one guy came in so innocently for the 3330s when the stock was uh, 3315, he came in for the 3330s weeklies. And then all of a sudden you started seeing 3340s, 34, uh, 3400s weeklies, the next week's 3500s. And again, with the strongest moves, guys, remember, are never off the top. They're always off the bottom. And once Amazon reclaimed this whole 33, 30 level, I mean, just an absolute rock star move. Again, uh, we'll get into uh, the pivots uh, in a second. So we are set up technically this week. Uh, you have the catalyst, obviously, in earnings. You have the 50-day moving average, uh, which is going to be determined. Cross your fingers. Hope it does. And the Security Exchange Commission um, approved the Bitcoin ETF, right? So as much as, you know, and there's, there's a great love for Bitcoin. Uh, some people, you know, don't like it. I have really no opinion on it. I think it's pretty cool. I think any time uh, that investors could potentially make 20, 30, 100 times their money is a wonderful thing. Um, but now they're coming out with the Bitcoin ETF, the, uh, the Bitcoin traded, I guess, above 60,000. Uh, and now everybody has a chance to trade it without a Coinbase account, without all that stuff. So that'll be pretty cool, right? That will definitely be pretty cool. So there's a lot of speculations, a lot of snowball bullishness uh, effects that could turn uh, this market really into rabid mode. But again, it all starts uh, for uh, tomorrow's session. And I am going at least into tomorrow. I really want to give the bulls uh, the benefit of the doubt. I am a hundred percent buy bias for tomorrow. So I'll be really, really disappointed if this kind of market gets rejected uh, off the 50 day moving average. But again, I'm not a child as well. I understand there is a potential and I am always ready uh, if we do uh, get rejected. So let's talk about Friday, right? Um, you know, just, just an absolute, um, absolute, I mean, this, this is, uh, it's really tough to kind of put, you had to really see what was going on with Tesla um, and especially Amazon and Tesla. Um, it, it's one of the craziest things I've seen. Uh, again, I, I know a lot of you guys did incredibly well. Just ridiculous. Just absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, so let's talk about it. Uh, Google, I still like. Remember the, the, the previous day, uh, it took out the 2817. Um, I still like this thing. It kind of rested. You know, it has still had a good, you know, it still had a pretty decent day, but it did rest here. I still believe if it could just get above uh, this 2840, I do believe you could still see 2870. Uh, so this stock looks, still looks, looks really, really good. Uh, NVIDIA triggered on Wednesday. Again, this is still an active sequence here. Uh, NVIDIA 213.50, that was from, from Wednesday. Uh, fantastic move so far, 219.40. Uh, it still continues the big number here. I still like it. I still think it goes higher, especially if we reclaim the 50-day moving average. I still believe we could get to the supply zone here again ahead of ahead of earnings. Still looks really really good. Uh, here is the you know one of the two rock stars uh, of the day. And if you notice, it's pretty much all high beta stuff. Uh, so Tesla started an active swing uh, a couple of days ago, right? Four or five days ago it was on Monday, I believe. Uh, that 805, 807 level was big. And Friday, like I said, 821. It was going to be the magic number. That's the do or die. So Jeffries came out. Uh, they raised their price target on uh, uh, Tesla for 950. Now, why was 821 such a big deal? If you look at the weekly chart on Tesla, and this is kind of this is where you really you have to understand technical analysis. This is the last channel. Everybody see this, right? The February 15th, uh, 2021 highs, right? That was 821. That was literally the last hurdle uh, before the stock really, you know, really has potential to erupt. There is literally no supply. Um, above 821 all the way to 900, which was all-time highs. 
uh, last January. Now, again, is it going to get to 900 uh, before earnings on uh, on Wednesday? You know, who the hell knows? But it looks really, really good. I do believe because the market is so good right now, or at least hopefully continues to be good, uh, if, if Tesla gives you any types of dips, especially before earnings, uh, definitely, definitely watch those rising 60-minute supports. But if not, um, you know, the stock was trading, you know, here pre, uh, after hours nearly 850. It was up another six, seven bucks uh, after the close. So it took out the 821 and just just went absolutely bananas, uh, just uh, bananas, just absolutely bananas. Um, again, huge, huge move here. Dash, uh, 8214 needs to build. Uh, first supply, 216.50. Uh, here was Dash, not something that I trade, or at least not, not trade a lot, uh, not trade often, just because it's a little too thin, but it traded exactly how I thought. Um, yeah, here's a 214, uh, I traded a little higher to 217.50s uh, into supply, you know, a nice little move there as well. Uh, Snapchat, this, uh, talk about crazy, we saw, we saw pretty big buying coming in Snapchat for the last couple of, week, uh, last couple of days. We saw the weekly uh, 79 and 80s. And you know, I, I talked about this one. 7741 rejected twice at the top of the range. Needs to build. Size buyers came in yesterday for the 77 and a half and the November uh, 80 calls. Here was uh, Snapchat. It talk about a move. It put up. It, this is not even exaggeration. So here's a 7741. Right, hit it once, hit it twice. All right, it took that out. Of the next, look, look how fast that move was. This thing put up a dollar fifty candle. If, if it was 45 seconds, I, I think that would be too long. It was probably under 45 seconds how big this move was if, with a lot of volume. That's the crazy part. With a lot of volume, with a lot of liquidity. So great, great move. You know, very, very big move there. Uh, Amberella, 169.5, 170 needs to build. Again, a lot of technology just went uh, really nuts here. So it took out the 69.5, 70. I uh, traded the 74.5 before it... Uh, reversed uh, letter U never got up there. Uh, here's Tesla 829 supplies, and then came Amazon, right? And again, like I said earlier, the biggest moves are always coming off the bottom channels, never the top. Most traders are never looking at the meat of the move. This is what we, we call the sneaky pivots, right? You ever hear me talk about the sneaky pivots? And Amazon, the bottom of the range was that 3327, excuse me, 3328. I actually had to t t uh, correct myself. And this is one of the biggest moves that I could probably remember in a long time that had nothing to do uh, with earnings. So here was Amazon. Um, I know some of you guys are still holding runners. They came from the 3500s. So once it took out that 3327, 3328 level, the first supply was 3347. It got there pretty quickly within, within a few minutes. And then what transpired after was just absolutely nuts. This was... This was a $50 candle in a matter of 10 minutes, right? Five minutes, right? Five, 10 minutes. And the stock closed all the way into daily supply perfectly at 3410. Uh, this thing confirms 3410 um, ahead of earnings, right? Maybe even tomorrow if, if it opens up lower into rising 60 to minutes support, you have to buy this thing into a dip. Next stop is this 34, uh, 3444 level and then obviously earnings uh, takes place, but just ridiculous, a ridiculous move. Uh, Tesla next stop 3840. You know it's trading eight, trading 850 after hours. You can see here uh, 3347 for supply, 3382 for all possible runners. Just went absolutely nuts. Um, Dash and Barella. I mean, you can see technology went. Uh, technology went uh, really, really uh, big here. Um, Square, I still like. I think. I, why the hell did I delete Square? Oh, maybe it was a 47. I don't know. It never got that. I still love the 52. I, I love that 52 area uh, on Square. I think it looks amazing. It really, really does. It's one of the names I really like for this week. A couple of weeks ago, a uh, couple of weeks ago, they were coming for, I believe they were coming for the end of the month 260s. Please double check. I, I don't remember. Please double check. Um, Apple, I still like. I really, really like Apple. So let's talk about some names uh, that I definitely like for this week, assuming we assuming we uh, confirm, right? Um, I like Apple a lot, right? Apple kind of looks like Amazon. Do I think a Apple's going to put up an Amazon move? Probably not. Uh, but look at this whole supply here, right? If this thing just starts building above this whole channel here, you could get a move uh, into the 50-day moving average. That looks really good. Square, as I mentioned a few few minutes ago, look at this square chart, man. If this square could just take out this whole channel, 
that started, it, it, there's basically a quadruple top. If this square could just get above this quadruple top, I think you get a really, really quick move uh, to the 50-day moving average. Even a name like eBay looks good, right? A lot of NASDAQ 100 names. eBay had a really, really big move. Now you're going sideways. A pretty good distribution here. If eBay could just get above this channel here, can really start ramping up as well. And Microsoft. Microsoft looks like it wants uh, all-time highs, right? Look at this long distribution. As we say all the time, the longer the distribution, uh, the bigger potential, and that's kind of where we're up. So we are set up for Monday, guys. Again, if you're a perma bull or just love buying stocks, Tomorrow is going to be a very, very big day. Cross your fingers, cross your toes, and anything else in between. Because again, if we do reclaim the 50-day moving average, I believe starts a next leg up in the market. Guys, have a great day. Have a blessed day. Smile. Enjoy life. And God's will, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take